Greetings, Saints. Welcome to Chaplain Peter One, brought to you by Eternal Values Ministries dot com. All right. Um, today is the 20th of July, and a lot of things have been happening um, this past month and these past few months. And I just want to share with you a few things to encourage the saints. We see a lot of uh, calamity going on, uh, terrorism, death, all kinds of death in uh, France, um, a terrorist uh, kills 80 some people with this uh, giant uh, truck, injures uh, hundreds of others. We see some 17-year-old took an axe and chopped up some people. Uh, I don't know if any are dead. They were in critical condition. We, we just see one thing after another. We just had a, uh, what they call a uh, coup in Turkey where uh, the military and others try to uh, actually take over the country. And, and then with the uh, Black Lives Matter movement, a shooting in Dallas, it was like five uh, policemen shot dead. And then um, they're marching around the, uh, in different uh, states and cities um, with the uh, oink oink, you know, uh, the, you know, pigs in a blanket and uh, kill the pigs this kind of stuff and um, so things aren't looking uh, too good. We know that our police departments have been uh, beefed up with all kinds of uh, military equipment that they brought back from Iraq and other places and that Homeland Security buys something like uh, a billion or more uh, hollow point bullets. I just read that the uh, United Nations is going to be given the uh, green light to come here with their uh, peacekeeping blue helmet, the blue helmet peacekeeping troops to uh, help us out here in case we need help, in case of, um, I suppose, riots and civil unrest and so forth. So uh, <laughs> it doesn't look too good. And when you put on top of this, you know, um, uh, LGBTQ plus plus and uh, you know in, in Europe you say anything about these people or about Islam that Islam is uh, pillaging and uh, raping the, uh, the European women and, and, and things like that you know anything negative about them put on Facebook police are coming to visit your house now Facebook is censoring this stuff. So it's just a matter of time before all this starts coming um, more over here. I know that they're bringing in more Muslims here from Syria, hardly any Christians, but a lot more Muslims. Um, this is designed and there's, there's a plan behind it. But um, I just want to encourage you Christians to, uh, to stand fast for the Lord. The Bible uh, teaches us this. It shows that throughout history this has gone on. We, we look at our own history here with uh, you know uh, the Bolshevik Revolution and World War One, World War Two, and all kinds of other conflicts on and off throughout uh, history. I, I was just talking about the uh, 1900s. I mean there's been nothing but war and bloodshed all through man's history. The first two boys, first two sons of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. Cain murders Abel. And why? Because Abel had respect, got God's respect for bringing a sacrifice, a lamb. And uh, Cain was disobedient. He showed what he could do, bringing the, uh, the fruits of the ground that he grew. This is God did not have respect to Cain's offering. God told Cain, if you, 
if you, if you do good, you know, you'll be received well. But if you uh, do bad, sin lieth at the door. And out of a fit of rage and uh, jealousy, out of the field, Cain rises up and he, uh, he kills Abel. And God says, what have you done, Cain? I hear your, your uh, brother's blood crying out of the ground. Well, a lot of blood's been crying out of the ground, haven't there? From the aborted babies to all the murders and wars. And so, you know, the, the scripture tells us man's hearts are going to be fainting. The men, men, hearts fainting because of the things that are about to come upon the earth. So we're, we're getting there, saints. So what is, what is the word of God? For you and me, what is God's word? What should we be um, looking towards? I was in uh, church uh, yesterday, and but it was the week before. I remember my pastor giving a message at the church that really, uh, really struck me. I mean, we know this as believers. We know to be absent from the flesh is to be present with the Lord. And then we die, we go to see the Lord. All right? Uh, I'm not particularly, um, you know, uh, want to be butchered or shot up or, or uh, you know, murdered. But, or if you, or, you know, we don't even want to die of old age, do we? <laughs> but to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And the uh, pastor really just kind of woke me up, you know. Um, I knew these things, but the revelation that, for instance, when that truck plowed through those people, right, when, um, when some bomb explodes in some crowded place, some suicide bomber blows the place up, is, is God in control? And, and we know, we should know the answer to that as Christians, yes. You know, that's why the scripture tells us we walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, faith in God's word, which is a reasonable faith. No one's ever disproved the Bible. And there's a lot of proof archaeologically wise and, and, uh, and other ways that we that are saved, we have to witness in ourselves of the Holy Spirit living in us, the testimony of God in us, and, and of changed lives. Um, our lives didn't just change through some kind of uh, psychological manipulation. <laughs> I had one, one lady tell me, um, I witnessed to her at a laundromat, an older lady, and I gave her a track and we're talk, I'm talking to her about salvation. And I told her, I know I'm saved. I know if I die, go to be with the Lord. And she says, well, that's a, there's a word for that. It's a, it's a psychological problem. It's a mental disorder. So we're crazy. We're crazy to a lot of people. But we know that we know that we know. If you trust in Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, your sins are covered. It's covered, man. It's covered by something better than the blood of a lamb when the high priest would come and sprinkle it on the mercy seat for over a thousand years in the temple of Israel. It's covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He being a high priest himself had to have something to offer. He offered himself and thereby by offering himself he put away sin forever. Once and for all. It's finished. That's why Jesus hung on the cross and he says it is finished. It's done. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord. So Regardless of what happens, we're saved. We're saved not because we feel we're saved. We're not saved or lost you know, because we're having a good day or a bad day, or because I got healed, or because God kept me from some terrible accident. I hear this all the time when I ask people if they're saved or they trust them. But God saved me from death. He saved me from this accident. He healed me from this. That's not salvation. That's being saved from certain things that, are, that happen through life. But that's not salvation. I, God told me a year before I got saved. I got on my 350 Honda in California. I was in the military. I had my helmet hanging on the side. 
I was about to take off, I wasn't going to put the helmet on, and I heard a voice real loud, put on your helmet. About 20 minutes, a half an hour later, I, uh, I hit a car at about 70 miles an hour. I, the inertia dragged me over the hood of the car and slammed me with my head into the pavement, into the cement pavement. I had my helmet on. There was a big black mark on the back of the helmet. I would have, I would have uh, bashed my brains all over the place. Probably would have been dead. And uh, so God saved me from that. But that's not salvation. That's not forgiveness of sin. That's not uh, trusting that Jesus died for your sins and rose from the dead. About a year later, I got saved. I trusted the Lord. And so, God's in control. So what, what happens when somebody blows the place up? And your loved ones are there. You see all these people dying everywhere, all this stuff. Well, the pastor reminded us that, um, you know, there's things going on that we don't see. Things going on we don't see. Remember Elijah? What is it, in Kings? Uh, just before... Uh, he gets taken up in a chariot of fire, and he's got his servant with him, and they got all these these armies around him from from uh, from this king and, and other nations. They're surrounding him to get him. They want to get Elijah because he didn't always prophesy good things to him. He, he spoke the truth of God, and um, his servant says, "Man, what are we going to do? We're surrounded. We're outnumbered. It's just us. And look at all these." All these chariots, look, look at all these horses and soldiers. And Elijah says, there's many more with us than there is with them. Lord, open my servant's eyes. And he opened the eyes of his servant, and he, man, he saw what Elijah saw. Chariots of fire and horses and angels all over the mountains and all around them. And so we walk by faith and not by sight. And so the past reminded us when when death comes like that through through this destruction and everything and people focus on that, we as Christians gotta remember that um, angels are coming down. And those people that, that just got blown up, just got run over by the, by that truck, just got axed, macheted up, just got beheaded. Whatever it is, angels are coming down to usher us into the presence of the Lord. In Acts 7, remember when uh, Stephen stood up and he, uh, he gave that, that great word to the Sanhedrin, the uh, judging council of, uh, of Israel that ran Israel, the ones that had Christ crucified, turned him over to Pontius Pilate and said, hey, he deserves to die. He blasphemed. Crucify him. Kill him. Give us the murderer. The one uh, who makes revolution, sedition. Give us Barabbas. But crucify Jesus, man. He's got to go. And so Stephen stands up. And he's accused of saying that um, God's going to destroy Moses' law. And that... Um, it's going to be replaced by the, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't quite say it that way, but that was the intention. And um, so they let Stephen speak. And man, he laid it on them. He laid it on them by the Holy Ghost. And would be a time that he got finished with them. They stopped their ears. They couldn't hear it no more. They, they gnashed their teeth. He hauled them out of town, and they picked up rocks as big as your hand and bigger, and started to and stoned him to death. And there was a young man there standing there named Saul, the chief persecutor of the church at that time, and became one of the greatest apostles, the apostle Paul. That's why the scripture says, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. It doesn't say all things are good. It says all things, even the evil things that the devil of this world throws at us, 
works together for good in God's plan toward his eternal purpose to us who believe. So when, when Stephen got stoned, it says Jesus stood up. When he got crucified, he went to heaven and he sat down at the right hand of God till his enemies be made his footstool. In Acts 7, he stands up. His enemies aren't made his footstool yet. What's going on? I personally believe. He stood up. He ushers in the martyrs, man. He stood up to bring this man who just gave his life for him by what he told the Sanhedrin. I mean, it was a death sentence, if you, you know, speaking like that to them. Just like some things out here are a death sentence when you start speaking. And um, speaking the truth. And so God ushered it in. So I believe just like angels came and chariots of fire and, and horses and they took Elijah, they come and usher us into the presence of God. So these are good things to remember in the midst of chaos and disaster and evil and hatred toward us. Because we're at that time, saints, woe unto them to call good evil and evil good. We're at the time of Matthew 24. There's going to be earthquakes and famines and pestilence and wars, rumors of wars. By the way, those, those words in the Greek, wars, rumors of wars, nation. Nation shall rise up against nation. The word ethnos, ethnic. It means racial. Racial wars. Arab against uh, Jew, black against uh, white, and so forth. This is where this is where we're at. And uh, then it goes on to say, Jesus says that these are the beginning of sorrows, the beginning of sorrows. We're in that we're in it, saints, and it's going to go from the beginning of sorrows into great tribulation with the Antichrist putting out the mark of the beast and the world hunting down the saints. Why well, don't I just read to you what it says in uh, Matthew 24. Now, how do I know we're at this time? Because for centuries, you know, people have been uh, saying that, um, well, it's the end of the world. It's the end of the world. We see people here right now, you know, oh, the Lord's coming on this date. He's coming on this date. Well, um, we know that's not right, but here's the deal, here's the thing. Let me read this to you, and then I'll explain. Matthew 24, and let's start in verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed, watch out, that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. In other words, the Messiah. And you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So all these things have been going on since man's been here, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise up against nation, those race, race wars and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, uh, people starving, pestilence, diseases and pestilence killing you, and earthquakes in divers places, various diverse places around the world. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Let me just say that this has always gone on, but you can look up charts and see that just for the past hundred years, in the 1900s alone, and, and, and just a few decades, uh, there's a great, great increase in all these things. Well, there's more people for one thing, right? So you would uh, assume there would be more diseases, more pestilence, uh, more wars. So that, that makes sense right there. Uh, right now, we've got around 7 billion people on the face of the earth. Back then, it wasn't near to anything like that. And so, this is one of the signs that we're, we're, we're towards the end. So these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they shall, and then shall they deliver you up. 
to be afflicted. Um, the kingdoms of this world, this world. And shall kill you. They're going to deliver you up to be afflicted. In other words, um, Christianity will be probably illegal. It's already illegal in some Muslim countries, we know that. Um, and if, if it's not on the books that it's illegal, they'll, they'll lock you up and they'll, they'll throw you in prison for having a Bible. In communist countries like North Korea and uh, China, uh, they'll lock you up too. They, they don't want this. And they will kill you. We're being killed. People are being killed because they're Christians. For no other reason, because they trust Jesus Christ. Of course, they'll make up things like, well, they blasphemed Allah, or you know, they're gonna hate speech, and we are, we hate people. We're, we're the big haters, and all this. So, laws are gonna come out. You know, during the time of Rome, Christianity was illegal. It wasn't until Constantine, the Emperor Constantine, made it legal. I think it was about 330 A.D. Um, that uh, the Christians, you know, they got a little bit of peace. But it wasn't too long, because then comes the Catholic Church. If you didn't kiss the Pope, they'd barbecue you. And I'm not trying to offend people. I'm just telling you, this is what happened. It went into the 1800s even, man. These inquisitions, terrible ones. You can, you can find them online. This isn't made up stuff or revised history. These things actually happened. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now notice, it says, of all nations. Before it was maybe Rome, maybe some uh, Catholic countries, you know, maybe a few places here and there. But now, as we got a closer view, as we can take a magnifying glass and uh, and turn on the computer and in a moment get news from all over the world take uh, Google Earth and start traveling all over the earth I mean with this stuff there's been such an increase in uh, technology and knowledge in general and uh, Daniel the prophet Daniel was giving a, was given a vision by God, a word, a word from the Lord, and he's writing it down. And the Lord says to Daniel, seal it up. Seal it up for, for many days in the future where men will be traveling to and fro, back and forth in the earth. In other words, transportation. You can hop on a jet plane and be in China or Russia in uh, you know, 10, 12, uh, 14 hours. You, you can travel the world today uh, in a few in a few hours where, where it took years to travel it took months to travel we're there you know like like in a flash and it says knowledge should be greatly increased our knowledge now has exponential exponential exponent you know what an exponent is has it greatly increased it's just exploded in the, in the 90s and the 2000s and now. I mean, they're actually talking about downloading who we are, our consciousness, our being into some avatar body, to some computer. You know, we're, we're moving towards Godhood. <laughs> they don't know they're going to the pits of hell, but they think they're moving towards God, Godhood, which is transhumanism and all this other stuff. And so, and now this is, you know, the, the homosexuality is worldwide, worldwide. Very few countries are holding out. The abortion is, is worldwide. Some countries are holding out, but this is being all pushed worldwide. Uh, churches worldwide are falling away. This is no more than just locales or certain empires. This is all worldwide. I think, I, I believe this is what shows us that this is the time. This is, this is the time, all right? Um, 
and, and we see we see the lawlessness. I'm not just talking about somebody mugging people on the streets or robbing people or drugs. I'm talking about the lawlessness in government. Just look at the lawlessness in our government. It's unbelievable. I was just reading how the, the FBI director and uh, the AG, the Attorney General, uh, Loretta Lynch of the United States, and I, I don't know the, the FBI director's name, um, who just let go of Hillary Clinton, they, wor they both worked for a bank. There was a big scandal years ago. Um, I'll put it up on the screen. It was the HBC, HSBC Bank. He was laundering money for the, for the cartel. Well, guess who worked for that bank? You got it. He's now the FBI director, and Loretta, Loretta Lynch is now the uh, Attorney General of the United States. Isn't that amazing? And then you got people that go to meetings with the Bilderbergers, next thing you know they're president. They go to the Bohemian Grove, where they sacrifice children. A bunch of homophile, pedophile kooks from all over the world. And um, all of a sudden you see some president over there, some man over there, next thing you know, he becomes later on president of the United States. So there, there is such lawlessness, such corruption. I mean, tell me, don't you think the United States could uh, just crush ISIS right now? Don't you really think so? If they really wanted to. But see, the corruption, there's money in war. They call it the uh, military industrial complex. Somebody's making money building tanks and planes and fighters and ships. Somebody's making money in, in taking and setting up nations and bringing them down. I have to tell you, this is diabolical. This is diabolical. And um, so we've come to that place of, you know, the cup of iniquity, of lawlessness is, is starting to run over. And the saints are being murdered for just being saints, for just trusting the Lord. They won't go along uh, like Mordecai. He wouldn't bound out to Haman. Remember the story in Esther and what happened to, uh, to Haman who built the gallows for uh, Mordecai and who wanted all the Jews exterminated, had the king persuaded the king, tricked the king to make it a law. But there's a people here among you. They don't bow down to you. They don't go according to your laws. They, they, they stick to themselves. You need to wipe them out, king. King made a law. Once he made that law, you couldn't change it. The laws of the Medes and the Persians. But he didn't know that his most beautiful wife, Esther, was a Jewess. And um, Mordecai got hold. He got wind of it. They're going to kill us off, man, on this certain day called Purim. The Jewish people still celebrate it today. Anyway, the king changed the law. Haman and his family hung on the gallows instead of Mordecai. The Jews were not exterminated. Cannot be because through the line of Israel, the Jewish people comes Messiah, the king of Israel, the prince of the earth. So it couldn't be, couldn't happen. And the king, even though he couldn't change the law, he wrote into the law, the Jews are able to defend themselves the best they can. And they did very well, and they're, they're still here. Praise the Lord, they won. And Mordecai, he got very high in position with the king, just like uh, Joseph when he was sold into slavery, with Pharaoh, his brother sold him into slavery. And the scripture stands. People do evil, kingdoms do evil. Uh, the devil does evil, but all things work together for good. To them that are called by God, to them that love God, according to his purpose. Praise the Lord. Praise his holy name. And so, I mean, those seals that God told Daniel, seal the book, is for a time in the future. You go to Revelation 6, 
and no one's worthy to open the book with the seals on it. The seven seals. But then John sees a lamb like it was slain before the foundation of the world. It's Jesus. He's worthy to open the book. No one else was found in heaven and earth worthy to open the book. But the Lamb of God is worthy, who redeemed us from every nation, tribe, and tongue, who shed his blood for us. He was worthy, who overcame sin and death and the devil for you and me. He starts loosing the seals. And we see the Antichrist start riding in a white horse, starts to conquer. Then we see the black horse come. Or it's the red horse with a great sword and the rider on there. And he, he's, he's given power to make war, that men should kill each other in the face of the earth. You know, I don't know if these seals have been loosed yet. Um, it seems to me they get loosed at the time of, of um, well, those 42 months starts with the Antichrist. But the Antichrist is riding already. And he's conquering nations. The whole Middle East is upside down and destabilized. And now they're trying to do the same thing to Europe and America here and the whole world. And people are going crazy. They want to start killing each other. All these divisions, these artifacts, these, these fake things are being made. We as Christians know uh, we fight not against flesh and blood, right? We fight against evil in high places, these princesses, principalities, powers in the heavens. Satan is the prince and the power of the air. And so we're here in this evil, evil world. God lets bad things happen to good people, to Christians like you and me even. And he, and he lets good things happen to bad people. But at the end, it's going to be an accounting. Vengeance is mine, say the Lord, I will pay back. Therefore, if your enemy hunger, feed him. If he starts to give him the drink. For in being kind to him when he does evil to you, you're heaping coals of fire on his head to bring him to conviction so that he might see the true God, be convicted of his sin, and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's called uh, evangelism. <laughs> Sometimes it's not an easy thing to do, but when you do it that way, it works. Because it's got the power of God behind it and the Holy Spirit, and people get saved. Amen? All right. And so, Matthew 24, verse 9. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations, United Nations. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. You know, our, our sitting president, President Obama, uh, he also works for the UN. I believe he, he chairs the UN. This is something I think that is illegal. Uh, to be a sitting president and to, have, and to sit in the seat of, uh, of the chair of, of the United Nations. But nevertheless, it's happening. Also, the Pope we have today is a Jesuit Pope. The Jesuits have been run out of like 60 countries because of their assassination plots, <laughs> overthrowing governments, and things of this nature. And so, um, the Catholic Church hasn't had any Jesuits. I think it's illegal according to their writing to have a Je the black pope it's called. And that's what we got, a Jesuit pope. So there's a lot of lawlessness uh, going on. Uh, for you that understand what happened on 9-11, you see the deceit, the deception, the lies. I mean, there's no doubt about it. This government People in this government, together with foreign governments, took down those buildings, killed those people for the express purpose then of going into the Middle East to take over the nations, blaming Iraq and other countries, uh, and Osama bin Laden, you know, sitting in a cave with his uh, Mac computer, or his Windows computer, and he's uh, you know, he's got, the whole, he's, he's got the whole plan there with these 19 young men. 
who, who couldn't even fly planes like that. The maneuvers they made, pilots who flew for 30, 20, 30 years, veteran pilots said they couldn't make maneuvers like that. I mean, when you really take a close look at this and you just don't buy what uh, the media is telling you, what, what the liars of this world are telling you, you start figuring it out. And most people can't take it. They can't take the truth, man. It's just too much for them. And this is what the devil's betting on. This is what these Luciferians and these, these, these guys uh, who, are, who are doing these things, these evil people are, are betting on that uh, you won't be able to, it just can't be, man. This is just too evil. Who, who would do this? But you look at the history of the world, take a look at what Hitler did, what Ma, what Ma Testung in China did, killing millions and millions, tens of millions of uh, people. And Hitler tried to exterminate all the Jews again. And, and, and could you imagine if we didn't intervene and, uh, and we didn't win? What would be going on? And yet, what do we do? Operation Paperclip, who took all the Nazi scientists and doctors and secretly changed their IDs and brought them into the United States. They're working for NASA, they're working for the Pentagon, all kinds of programs, DARPA and all this stuff. A bunch of deceit and lies, diabolical. A skull and bones, the bushes, skull and bones, Carrie. Cheney, Freemasons, just saturating the government. They don't worship the same God we do. This has been ordained, this has been planned, but our God is in control. So he goes on here. And then shall many of be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. People are going to be turning one another in. The Lord Jesus said, the child's going to be turning in to their parents. Hey, they're Christians. They read the Bible. They're trying, they're trying to make me read the Bible. <laughs> they want to take me to this secret church. I'll show you where it's at. Okay? Neighbors betraying you. Husband betraying the wife, you know, if she's a Christian. Many shall betray you. Betray one another. And shall hate one another. God's cleaning house. Judgment's got to start in the house of God first. He's going to separate the wheat, the good stuff, from the phony in the church. That's what this is all, all about. But he that shall endure, oh, excuse me, verse uh, 12, verse 11, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity, lawlessness shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. People's hearts are going to be like a rock, cold. They couldn't care less. I mean, just go abort your baby, man. Where's your heart at? Where's it at, mothers? The hearts get hard. Just keep lying and believe these lies. The heart gets hard. People being blown up and everywhere. Oh, it's just an everyday occurrence, no big deal. The hearts start getting hard. But he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Wow. So again, this is something that has to happen in the future. Because now with the technology we got, we can go everywhere into the villages, the most remote jungles and people have gone already and translated the word of God into their languages right now they got uh, faith coming by hearing this organization they got these um, these uh, audio Bibles in the language of the people and they take it they go into, into jungles of Africa or South America or somewhere Bangladesh or, or, or where you know they go into these remote places in India all these different dialects, thousands of languages, and you know, and they translate it. People are hearing the gospel. And the Lord says, when this gospel is published throughout the whole world, then come it the end. Verse 15, and when you, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, 
spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso read it, let him understand. I believe it's in the future. It's going to be the Antichrist declaring himself to be God. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And he sits in the temple declaring himself that he's God. I think the one with um, the Syrian, I believe it was, or from Assyria, um, Epiphanes, he went in the temple and he set up a, a statue of Jupiter, the Holy of Holies. I believe that was a shadow. That's not the complete, that's not the fulfillment. Because, see, another clue here is that Jesus said that uh, this tribulation, this this time that's coming is going to be so bad like never there was a time on the earth before it's going to be so bad. Do you hear that? That's how bad it's going to be. There was never a time on the earth that's going to be so bad. Unless God would shorten those days, no flesh would survive. Again, a worldwide picture. Things that can destroy life on the earth, the whole planet, all seven billion of us like radiation, nuclear war, and the, and the biological diseases that uh, Russia, America, and other nations uh, have made that can wipe out, <coughs> start epidemics, bubonic plagues. They got them sitting on ice in some icebox in laboratories. These diseases they made up. I think AIDS was made that way. I really do. Because they, they want to they get, the, you know, the devil wants to kill people. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And they want you to believe, well, it's okay, therefore go get an abortion. We got too many people on the earth. You know, we need to lower it down. The first commandment of the uh, Georgia Guidestones, the American Stonehenge, uh, get the population down to 500 uh, million people. Half a billion? You got seven billion? Well, what are you doing with all, with the other nine-tenths of the people? Where do they go? I don't think they're, they're counting on a pre-trip rapture. They're going to kill us. I mean, it's all over the place. Uh, do you think some crazy ideas or conspiratorial theories, you know, that are nuts or something? Just, you see it now. It's all over the place. And with the, with the internet, we find this stuff out real quick today. There's no more hiding. There's no more deception. If you're still watching the regular TV channels that are um, six corporations, or six, yes, about six corporations own all the channels. They're feeding you what they want you to eat, what they want you to believe. It's called propaganda, brainwashing. Uh, it's been going on all through history. Hitler was a master of it. The Chinese were master. All of these. Stalin was a master of it. And so. <laughs> But when you start getting, when you start actually getting into uh, people who care, and they don't got an agenda, but they they go they'll lose their lives and tell you the truth before they start, before they can be bought off by these people and lie to you. Now now you're getting the truth. So you got you know you got to use your own wisdom in this, and you, and you need to you need to research and seek these things out, but. Um, we're here, people. This is why I believe we're near the end. And I just want to encourage you that uh, when you see all this disaster, just remember, angels came and uh, ushered your son, your daughter, your mother, your father, your wife, or your husband, your loved one, your friend, that just got blown up, got shot down usher them into the presence of the Lord, if you trust in Jesus as Lord and Savior. Because if you're not trusting Jesus as Lord and Savior, the moment you die, you're going to open up your eyes in hell, in hell, in torment, in darkness, gnawing and gnashing of teeth, a place of torment. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke about hell more than anybody else. You know why? He don't want you to go there. Salvation is a gift. It's a gift. It has to be. None of us are good enough to earn heaven. 
all of us have broken God's laws. We're born into sin. See, this is the thing about evil. God created everything good. You read Genesis, the first chapter. He, he made the heavens and the earth, it was good. He made the plants, and it, it was good. He made man, it was very good. So God created everything good. But he gave us a free will. And in that free will, he wants us to choose if we want to love him or not. So you can't force nobody to love you. It doesn't work. People have to voluntarily do it. They have to want to do it. No one's going to go to be with the Lord in heaven who doesn't want to be there. No one's going to be, no one's going to want to go there who doesn't love the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you don't want Jesus, if you hate the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't want to go to heaven. God's given you a free will, and because he's given this free will, because that's the only way to get people and angels to serve God, this is the way God wants us, by our free will. Because if there's any other way to make us serve God, we would be robots. Like you program a computer, you program a machine, it only does what is programmed. It can't do nothing else. But we think, we understand things, and we love or we hate. And God wants us by our own free choice, our own free will, our own volition to love the Lord, to love Him. And that's how we got to come to Him. Right? And by making it this way, by this plan, that we come to him and love him by our own free will, by giving man a free will, he also gives man the free will to do evil. And that's why you see all this evil. Man chooses to do evil. The scripture, John 6, 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life, the next verse says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Saved. Be with the Lord for eternity, not in hell. But here's, here's the condemnation. Here's the problem. Men love darkness. They love evil rather than the light, the good. See, he's given us a choice. We ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's what's happened. Right? Now we need to eat from the tree of life. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And so if you can believe in your heart, this is the way the gospel's preached. Say, I don't, I don't take my knife and put it to your neck and threaten to kill you or behead you if you don't trust my God. Because you've got to do it by your own free will. Otherwise it don't count. Jesus came down, God came down, became a man, the Lord Jesus Christ. By his own free will, he went to the cross. Otherwise, his sacrifice for us, his payment for us, would not count. We'd all be on our way to hell. So, God has given us a free will. Evil is here for the duration until this program, this plan God has is completed. When all the people that God has are going to trust him, and all the wicked ones are, are, are just, you know, just hate him, and at the right time, it's going to be like Noah's door to the ark. It says, God closed the ark. He closed the door to the ark. And all those other people, they just drowned and ended up in hell. But Noah and his family was safe on the ark, and the animals also. And so, God's going to close the door. It's going to come. But first, it's coming a terrible time on this earth. And you receive the mark of the beast his name or his number. And you're going to be tormented by God's holy angels for all eternity. No way out. If you don't receive it, they'll kill you. They'll put you to death. Read Revelation 13, Revelation 14. Read the book of Revelations. It's all there. And, and so, you come to him right now, believe he loved you, he died for your sins, According to the Bible, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, verses 1 through 4, the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world, 
died for your sins according to the, to the scripture, was buried, rose from the dead according to the scripture. And that if you will believe that in your heart, you'll be forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. God will give you his Holy Spirit and you will know that you know that you know your sins are forgiven. And you have eternal life. So then let them, you know, they come blow you up, they come kill you, they put us in prison for not obeying their, their crazy laws, their lawlessness. If we suffer for Christ, he's going to reward us. We get martyred for him, great rewards for him. not 72 virgins and not killing people to receive, to be a martyr, <laughs> but for suffering, for doing right. This is God's way. This is real Christianity. So I leave you with these thoughts, saints, and um, I love you, and the Lord loves you. And I just pray that if, if you never trusted Jesus, why don't you just by your own free choice trust him now as Lord and Savior. You'll never be sorry. I've trusted him now 41 years. He's completely changed my life. And no matter what evil comes, no matter what they throw at you, God will work all things together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. God bless you. I love you and the Lord loves you.